So thank you, Sandra and Judy, for coming in. Mm -hmm. I know it's been a rough day, and elections are tomorrow. But we wanted to meet with with you folks and check in and do some talk some personnel mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So I would make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters per one BSA three thirteen A three. And should we invite anyone? And we would invite Sandra Fever and Judith Fitch. Okay, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, any opposed, hearing none? She's turning 60. Oh. That's exciting. Yeah. Don't forget to take oh. a sticker. I saw that. That's abuse, right? It is. Write her up. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. All right, so um, we'll resume regular session. The board has nothing to report from executive session. Um, I talked, Alfred and I traded phone calls, and there was no reason really for him to come tonight. Nothing else, nothing else from the treasurer. Where she went, I believe, the town clerk. Town hall renovation. Um, town hall renovation. Um, we're working on the, the kind of like the septic issue. So stay tuned for that. Right. Um, I don't think we have anything on Act 46 to update. Hi, Peg. Right. We filed. We filed the the letter with David Kelly that the board agreed to. Hi, John. Last meeting. So that's all done. Just waiting for kind of things to things are just percolating along. Um, all right. Wait for everybody to get settled. But you want party next? Oh, that's what the cups were for. Yeah. I couldn't figure out. And we're going to serve, we're serving alcohol. Shots. Like margaritas. <laughs> like shots and shots. You hope. Shots I never know. <laughs> All right. You know, many years ago, I went to a, uh, Isle Lamont Select Board meeting, and uh, the, I think it was the chair, if my memory serves me right, had a cooler next to him. And we sat down, state officials, and he okay. said, want a beer? And he passed out beer, and they were drinking beer at Select Board meeting. Isle Lamont. Oh, Isle Lamont. Oh, they drink, they drink beers at their Select Board meetings. Yeah, I remember what happened. That was explains the every the treasurer or somebody there. But then I thought about it, you know, since being on a slick board, I, I don't think there's any law prohibiting us drinking on the job here. No, but there's no alcohol that can be served here. No, no, you can bring your own beer and oh. get drunk at slick board meetings, I guess. Oh, that could we be entertaining. There's another policy to write. We don't have enough policies. Right. Well, can we write can policies? Things are weird enough on a slick board without. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Peg, you, know, Peg, you didn't bring any wine with you, did you? We don't want to have a reason for that policy. Mm -hmm. Alright. Alright, so let's get started. Now everybody's here. Alright, thanks for coming. So You're what's welcome. going on with the Conservation Commission? Well, lots of stuff. Yeah. Um Yeah, you know, um, you know, you may or may not have heard that Joey had a stroke. Her She's hand. really doing well. She's really doing well. She's at home. She has a lot of care, but she hardly even needs the care. She's still confused okay. and still, it's hard to figure stuff out, but she's doing really well. She actually came, we had a Four Winds training this morning and we, she went and really, we learned all about rotten logs. It was really interesting. How many critters live in rotten logs? Oh my logs? God, there's so many critters that live in rotten logs, you would not believe it. That Susan Sawyer is just amazing. You know, Susan uh, from Woodward, the oh, ecologist. Oh my God, she knows so much. Anyway. Um, so she's doing well, and Drew's gone. He'll be back early January, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, so in the meantime, there's been four of us. Maddie resigned? Maddie resigned. She just didn't have time. She had to take some other jobs. She was like working all the time. So, so there's six all together. So there's me, Larry's the vice chair, Neil, Julie, oh, and Pat. 
Uh, yeah, it's relatively new. Um, and we just still really functioning well. Um, we've even talked about, we could have more members, but we're thinking, you know, we're, we're just, it's, it's a great functioning group. Um, oh, and we have Katie. Right? Yes, that helps a lot. Which is amazing. Um, so, do you want to know what we're working on? Sure. Okay. Um, well, you know, there's the Emerald Ash Boyer issue. Right. And, uh, you know, we're, er, towns are encouraged to come up with a plan and, you know, for road. So there's two, it, there's two parts to it. There's the public ash trees along the roads and if there's any on any public property. And then there's private ash trees. And so um, we're going to be working on a plan for the roadside ash trees, the ones that are the public ash trees. Is that going to be different than the other work we're doing with um, Joanne Garten? Very different. Very different. Yeah, although that is just an amazing organization. It's the Urban and Community Forestry Program. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of, I think, a joint thing between the, it's the Agency of Natural Resources and it's some state and federal people as well and money. There's a lot of federal money. They have um, so many resources. Their websites are just fantastic. Wow. Um, so, uh, but jo that's who Joanne works for, and Joanne is the person who's doing the roadside vegetation right, assessment. So she's been, she has been indicating, she's been identifying ash trees along. If you look at that last map she sent, mm -hmm. the, for the roads that she, that we all decided she was going to evaluate, she has indicated the ash trees. So that's what I thought she'd been doing. Some of them. Right, but she only she's not doing all the all the roads. So, um, so for the um, public ones, Neil uh, Maker, who is on the conservation commission and is our tree warden and is a forester, and I um, have been meeting to kind of figure all this out. Like, wh what needs to be done? What do we need to know? What do we need to learn? Um, do we want somebody from that program to meet with us? They're giving workshops. I mean, there's workshops all the time in the state about Emerald Ash Right. And there's one on November 28th, which I think I'm well, going to Well, CBRPC announced some of those. Right. But ultimately, towns have to figure out a plan. Is it, re is it Our own plan. So it's required that we have a plan? No. But we really want to plan. Right. We want to know because um, there are different possibilities for what you want to do. Um, do you want to inventory them? I mean, Neil and I think they should probably be inventory, which means, you know, maybe because you, emerald ash borer, tr ash trees that apparently they're almost all going to be affected. Ninety nine percent and inspection, um, mm -hmm. but. They're now recommending foresters, Neil, the state, not to cut them all down. Right. Not if you them. have right. on your There's private property some really great, big, valuable ash trees, cut them down. Have them cut, <coughs> sell them, use them for firewood, whatever. But, you know, there's always the chance that there'll be a, 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 a what do you call it, a resistant, resistant, a resistant one. Yeah. And also, which is good in this context. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, and that, yeah. And but the other thing is, is that they can be treated with an insecticide, and apparently it's pretty successful. And Neil's in the process of finding out what it involves and what it costs. So, for instance, Montpelier, which has a tree board, has done an inventory of all their ash trees, and they have identified ones that they feel are really important to save. And they are going to be doing the town, the city's spending the money, and they are going to be treating them. And it's some kind of injection, you know, they built bore a hole and then put a plug and then inject. Oh, you I don't spray the whole tree? No, it's not sprayed. And it's injected tree. and I think it's like, <coughs> you do it initially and then maybe every two years or three years, I can't remember. Do you know what the cost is? But apparently is? it's very successful. And so there's several reasons mm -hmm. to do it. One is so that you want to save the ash trees that are important, whatever important is, but work on those criteria. And also so that there'll be ash trees left that can have new baby ash trees right. after right. the other ones are gone. Now, when you talk about doing this inventory, 
We wouldn't be able to do an inventory of trees on private property. No, we're talking about public no. trees, and that's why I said there's two parts to this, and I'm just talking about the public part. And um, Joanne, or we were just notified, there's a, there are grants available, um, $500 grants. Um, I think it's due, the applications are due in January. And it can, it's all for Emerald Ash Board stuff. And so Neil and I were talking about maybe we could get a grant to help with the inventory, mm -hmm. you know. So we're, we're working on that. As far as the private trees are concerned, um, what we really need to do is have callous, we need to have some workshops in callous. We really need to educate private landowners about it, about the Emerald Ash Board, about how to identify it, about what it is, and about what their choices are on their, on their own land. Well, we should be getting, letting people know, probably even now on Front Porch Forum, and pe people buy firewood. And yes, we are an infected area, but these things don't move that fast. But we're well, we buying firewood from, if you're buying firewood from a place that is infected, you, you're actually accelerating its That's its true. Movement. You know, we were thinking right. of No waiting. one thinks about that. Well, I know, we were people thinking should, about People should, to the extent possible, have the firewood cut off their own property. Mm -hmm. Hire a guy to cut on their property. People who have infected trees are encouraged to cut them down, mm -hmm. have them cut. Um, now, when you're talking about giving these trees a shot, are they trees that you already know are infected? No. Nope. So you well, would, so Apparently, Neil says once you know they're infected, they're gone. That's gone. Really? You can't treat them with that? Neil says. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. I mean, maybe, because that's the problem with this pest, is that, you know, they lay eggs and they bore through mm -hmm. the thing, but they don't show. Yeah, you can't see it. And then you can't see them. And then, it, you know, if they're... It's two or three years. Yeah, it's, and then, but every spring, they, you know, they hatch out of the trees. Mm -hmm. And then the moths fly around and they lay more eggs and then it right. just perpetuates itself. Is that right? We have that in our minutes. I think you explained it pretty well with Neil. <laughs> Neil explained it at our conservation mm -hmm. commission Can I meeting. Have a question? It was four years. I was just commenting. Oh, oh, it's four years? Yeah, because I, I went to, like, a couple weeks ago, and she was saying that um, once it gets in, it's usually it's four, four years, years, and then it's a tree is dead. But in the meantime, they're infecting. They're yes. going around and spreading. So you're talking about doing some, at least one workshop here in Cal's, is there a charge? Oh, at least one, yeah. We have? probably would do it, you know, we're thinking of doing it jointly with the select board. Right. Probably in May, you know, ash trees don't oh, leaf good. out. They're very late to leaf out. And, you know, um, I mean, professionals can identify and some people can identify ash trees in the winter, but it's a lot easier for uh, lay people to identify the ash once the leaves are out. And um, is there a cost? And they don't start flying. So they don't start flying anyway until later. Is there a cost to have them come and do a workshop? We would do the workshop. Oh, the conservation workshop. Yeah, we would do it with you because okay. we're, you know, it's, you go to these workshops, you learn the same thing over and over again. Right. I mean, we did that. There isn't that much to know. You know, they have pictures, this is what it looks like. You know, here's some suggestions on what to do. Could we combine it with invasive species, too? I don't know. What do you want to do about invasive species? I mean, it's such a big area. Just some education. We'll have to see. We'll have yeah, to I don't see. know if it could be combined. Because we do need to do that, too. Right. Anyway, so that's our Emerald Ash Borer plan. So as I said, Neil and I are working on that. And the other thing that Neil and I, and I say Neil and I because Neil and I have been talking about doing this um, other thing for years, and we finally have said, okay, we're going to sit down and do this, and that is tree warden staff, tree warden ordinance, a tree ordinance for cows. So there's a statute that sets out what the requirements are or what the right, they were parameters are. Or something. They didn't update them. They, they had an updated proposal in the legislature. They're very, very out of date. They're very vague. Right. Um, they talk about shade trees and residential trees, and it, they don't apply to rural areas. No. And so, and everybody who deals with stuff knows that. They're aware of it. There was a pr proposed rewritten statute, and I don't know why. I don't know what happened to it, but it didn't go anywhere last year. I just remember them talking about it. Yeah, they were talking about it. Like so. Um, so, a lot of towns and cities have tree ordinances, because you decide what you want to do. You know, the town can decide how it wants to define the trees 
um, that to protect or to, you know, and when do you need a hearing and when does the town, when does the road crew have to contact the tree warden and, you know, all of that stuff. So, um, and some, some towns they recommend, or this, the, the urban community, forestry people recommend maybe having a, you know, a, a tree working group in town. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, I mean, we just don't have that many people to, who are willing to do things in town. Right. So, but, so that's what Neil and I are looking at. All the, you know, what do other, it's hard to find small towns that have tree ordinances, but some of them do, and there's big towns that have great ones. Mm -hmm. And so we're reading them and trying to figure out what makes sense for Callis and, you know, and then what we'll do is take some information or proposal to the rest of the Conservation Commission, and then at some point we'll then bring it to you, and then we'll have a public hearing. Right. You know, because it's an ordinance, so it's right. up to you. Know, you. Have to ordinance it's a select board to do it, but right. it's really kind of overdue. We really need. We, I know we've been talking about it for a few years. We have been talking about it, so we finally decided. So any of these things. Settle down and do it. Doesn't sound like it would cost anything. Um, just remember when you get grants, there's a lot of work that this part of the office has to do in administration, even if it's only $500. There's still all these steps and reporting requirements and documentation and... Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really up to you. Would you rather we look for grants or would you rather we come to you for money? I mean, if we say, oh, you know, we think that really the ash trees in town should mm -hmm. be inventory and there should be some criteria for what you're looking for. So what makes an important ash tree? That's a lot of work. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of roads in town, right. a lot of trees in town. We have a lot of ash. So the $500 grant, so, about them, it's not that much money, but if we don't have to come up with the $500, that's one less thing. It's not a matching grant either. Budget. So there's no in-kind or any of that? No. What is the... What is the grant for? Is it to get somebody to do the inventory? There's a whole list of things. It's sort of like anything to do with them about a board that you need money for. And so, uh -huh. we, you know, so we were, Neil and I were going over it and we were saying, well, some of it has to do with tree planting, but we're not there yet right. by any means. And we thought, you know, I mean, an inventory, maybe an inventory, maybe hiring, you know, some professional or semi-professional or somebody that, you know, we can hand some criteria to and say, okay. Right. But I wonder if it makes go sense look. to do the community meeting to get out the word about what Ash Emerald Ash Borer is. There might be people that are really interested in that and they come to a meeting and then you can hook, line, and sink them into volunteering. Is it possible? You know, what's, what's your timeline in terms of When's your budget done? I mean, when do you guys have well, any time? Well, we have to have the budget for FY20 done by the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. So maybe February. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, we were we were thinking of May because, as I said, the, the trees are right. so, so, so identified. Is the thinking that we'd inventory them in, in, in order to possibly treat them? Because I just looked at the digger article that Cliff shared. Montpelier is inventory, I think, did they say 12,000 trees? Yeah. And you divide 12,000 into their budgeted amount to treat those trees, and they said they're going to try to treat as many as they can. It works out to $625 a tree. I'm just not wow. sure if this town well, is going to do that. So yeah. we have to see. But, but we maybe, don't know. maybe, maybe it's mostly labor, and maybe we get volunteers and they, they can be like drilling taps. No, know. I agree. I'm just saying maybe nothing can really be done right. until the spring. That's right. all. There's really nothing to do. Right. So, yeah. so if we had, a, would we have a, a $500 grant in place by the spring? Yeah, we would want that. Right. right. If we I, get think the, Janu I think January is a deadline. Dead we have it for the spring. And we would have it for the spring. Yeah. And then the question is, how far would that $500 right. go? Right. Like it would go um, and this is hard. still, you know, the initial stages. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, we can all develop. We will develop a list. We right. and anybody who's involved, a list of the criteria. We'll be drawing on other towns and other things. Anyway, other criteria, what's important, but here in Callis, uh, it's going to end up, I think, it's going to be location. It's going to be the most important criterion. I mean, of course, you want it to be healthy. You want it, you know, but it might be that, you know, we have some ash trees that provide a really important canopy somewhere, you know, or we have a tree that's, mm -hmm. people go, oh, my God, it's such a beautiful tree. You know, we don't want to, you know, we don't know yet what, right. you know, we're just sort of, thinking about what would the criteria be. Well, it might be one tree, it might be 20, right. we don't know. Well, it would be interesting to do that inventory. It would also be interesting to know what the grant 
will pay for it? You know, will it pay for treatment? No, it will not pay for treatment, and it won't trade, and it won't pay for cutting trees. Those are the two things they say they will not pay. Jan's dying to speak. Well, I was wondering what grant this was. Was this through Central Vermont Planning, or was this a no. different grant through a different agency? It's through the, uh, I think it's the, uh, it's the Urban and Community Forestry oh, Program. Because the, the Central Vermont Regional just announced there was a total grant for EAB that's mounting up to 20000 I don't know how much it is for. Ah. The other thing that I heard um, at, at where I went the state has an application that you can download onto your smartphone, which can help you identify the ash trees along the road, and will develop a map <coughs> that highlights the ash trees along your road. Wow. Because the important thing is to identify, the municipalities need to identify, like you said, the road areas, because right. they're, that's our responsibility as right. a town. Um, and so I, you might want to see, my understanding is that, that I think that app is free because they were talking about it at a state thing. So maybe the $500 can leverage a community event like Green Up Day right. where we go out and do an inventory and then have a party. Yeah. And pick up trash while you're doing it. Well, right. right. I mean, I mean no, but see, that, would, you that, would that would be ideal. That would that charge $500. Yeah. If and people did it on their apps just for your stretch of road. Yeah. And the other yeah, you could make it a joint. Yeah. 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 And the other point was that the importance of the plan was not only to decide whether you do um, insecticide, pesticide, or whatever they call it, but if the tree dies, there is a cost to getting rid of the tree. And yeah, they are calling, they put in, they, yeah, the state organization, put in and said up to $1,500 per tree for removal because you have to remove the stump. Who, well. who would do that? Yeah, that's what, that, that's what they said at the, at the meeting that I was at, okay. presented by the, the, a woman from the forest area. Yeah. Um, and so that was the importance of developing a town-wide plan in order to budget from right. whether you do the insecticide to whether you should be. So it sounds like we need to do some kind of a workshop in town, maybe get this person, if you can remember who it is, to come in addition to talk about, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that kind of thing and do it all together. And maybe February is the time to do it before we get to spring. I mean, they are so willing to do anything to go anywhere or talk to anybody. Yeah. So let's get, maybe we can work on coming up with something to do jointly. Maybe we can do like one in East Callis, one in Maple Corner. <coughs> yeah, I mean the issue always is how do you get people to go out to a right. meeting? Well, you, you advertise that there's going to be snacks. Yeah. That's how you get people out. It's always a challenge. But I think a lot of people are becoming aware of the ash borer situation, mm -hmm. and there's probably plenty of people, homeowners, that would like to know right. what to do and how to do it kind of thing. Yeah. Too. The people in the current use program, um, we got a letter in the mail that talked all about it. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and if it's something on your an app, that just makes it sound so eminently doable. Right. You know. And getting some people who, for for regular people. Yeah, just in a couple of hours, you right. can actually do something. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Which often is not the case. Yeah. 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 So. You know, I mean, I'll be in touch with these people, okay. the community people. I, do you know, was it Meredith Whitney who was presenting? Because there's a woman. She did something. She just left, and somebody else is taking no, her. No, she, she, she did something at, at um, I went to a thing at the town garage where Joanne was there. Um, what's the? Elise. At 64 guy. Um, and this Meredith person was there. I mean, they did little blurbs at this. Um, at the town garage when we had that meeting. There's another workshop on November 28th, which I'm going to go to. I signed up for it. I don't remember who's putting it on. Where is it? It's at the uh, UVM Extension Service in Brewing. On Barry, on, yes, oh, on Barry Montelier Road, yes. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to go, I can. I'm going. You're going to go, John? Mm -hmm. I'll have to, I'll, I'll check into it because maybe yeah, I, I can go. Yeah, I send everybody the, uh, you have I, to sign up. It's not, it doesn't cost anything, but they want to know. Okay. 
I did All not right. know that. But... You want to know more? What else we're doing? What else are you doing? Because we got other people. Uh, we're doing, um, we have Act 171, which requires at some point for the town plan to be updated and include forest habitat blocks. Connectivity. Connectivity, right. Connect, connection. Forest habitat blocks. So the Conservation Commission is working on identifying them. And they've mostly been identified by Matt in the Natural Resources Inventory. So we met with him, went over it, and we met with Eric Sorensen. And now um, there's a, I don't remember, you know Monica and Jens? I, I do know Jens. We, yeah. I, I just had a session with him. Yeah, so they're, Jens, it's Jens. who do they work for? Jens. Jens. I don't remember who they work for, Jens. There's too much going on. I don't remember who they were. They were for the state. Some somehow they were for the state. He works in AR. He's in A and R. and Monica. Uh, we're going to be meeting with Monica about sort of next steps. And I've talked to Jan about it. And Jan said, "Wait till we finish the show." Monica Presby's. Yeah, she has a name with a lot yeah, of so a lot of consonants and yeah. many vowels. Presby. Right. right. <laughs> so Monica. It's work is going to work with Cal. She's happy that Cal is. She's wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to be mo moving forward with that. She may meet with us on our December 5th meeting. Um, and then the other thing that we're starting to work on seriously is revising the conservation fund guidelines because uh, the last few times there's been the conservation fund has been used, the guidelines have not worked very well. They're really out, out of date mm -hmm. and not relevant to the way things really work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think we need, there's a lot more we need to ask. Yeah, yeah. So what the money. Conservation Commission is doing, I think we said we were going to put that on our next agenda to work on as a group mm -hmm. um, to start going over them yeah. and taking a look Some at kind them of an carefully. You said. An and that's the, that that's the next the thing. The other thing is that um, there were people who felt that the process is not very, it's too loosey-goosey. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's too, it's not like, you know, like what happened. You know, you want to, people need to be more serious about coming to the town and saying, here's our business plan, you know, this is what we've done, this is what we're going to do. I mean, it's just been kind of people coming and saying, we want money. Right. right. We're doing something great. Right. We want your money. Right. Right. And then and we have to backtrack and ask a bunch of questions. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and... yeah, exactly. Like, where's your business plan? Um, so, uh, Richard Mazel, before he left the Conservation Commission, he prepared a draft application that would have called for a lot of information. And he had criteria in there. And I looked at it and I said, where are these criteria? These criteria aren't very good. And he said, I took them right out of the conservation fund guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I guess they do need to be revised. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that got going. And um, so we're going to work on that. And that's obviously something, they're yours. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you've got to sign it, you've got to agree right. with them. But we'll present a draft to you at some point. Okay. Um, and, good. Okay, and then... We are meeting now on the first Wednesday of the month instead of the second Tuesday. Katie has taken care of it on the calendar for us. Right. Um, and just for your information, we had a fabulous fall foliage walk. Neil, our forester, took us there up on Robinson Hill. Larry had arranged this because there are trails, there are town trails, but there's also a lot of mountain bike trails right. people have to go. A lot of people came. It was really well attended. We yeah. even had a pony. Wow. Uh -huh. And uh, it was really a great walk. Everybody yeah. was just so happy. We learned nice. so much. It was really fun. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. And you want to know about the budget. Right. So we don't have anything that we need money for that we know about. I mean, there's all these things, you know, that are kind of up in the air about grants and this and that. Except Katie. We know that we want to keep Katie as taping our minutes. And you right. guys, you've just been paying for it. If you want to put it in our budget, fine. I mean. Right, well I was going to ask Katie, and I hadn't yet. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you can do a breakdown sort of of what you what we've spent on yep. select board and what you've submitted this conservation yep. commission because we should have a I submit them separately each week. Right. And I've got I mean, them all in a file. Have to ask Sandra to do it. Would you be able to yeah, do yeah. that? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Who should I send it to? Um, send it to me. Okay. So that's all. I, you know, really. And what do you, oh, you're going to, what do you think 8000 for the fund again? Yeah, I mean, we'd like at least, yeah, because as you know, the fund is going to drop right. precipitously. Right. Well, the Memorial Hall project goes through. Right. Because you agreed to total of 50000 mm -hmm. Well, more than likely to turn it. Okay. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so we've got 8,000. We, we'd like to build it back up if we can. Mm -hmm. So we did 8,000 last year, so. Unless you want to ask for more. Yeah, well, for now, we'll pencil in the, the 8,000. But um, we haven't talked, the Conservation Commission hasn't talked about it this, this year. We will. And we've got green up on the Conservation Commission. So, and then it's not us. No, I think it's because it's. Cons I don't know why it's not. Yeah, it's just saying they're both. Right. What is this? Different thing. Conservation Commission 200 dollars. Do you guys have anything else that you? There was something. What was it? It, it cost. Um, it cost 108 dollars, whatever it was. Maybe it was some kind of membership to something or. You know, training. Know training. What it was printing. Printing. Oh, maybe it was printing. What is that lakes and ponds? Because we did. Because we did the um, the Matt Peters report, remember? Yeah. Last year though. Well, yeah. This was in um, in FY eighteen. We spent fifty five. In FY nineteen, so far we've spent one hundred and eight. <coughs> so I don't know what those are, but I bet we had some printing in there, so you guys could have handouts and things like that printed up. That's likely. Yeah. That must be what that is. If I can think of it, I'll let you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything okay. else? You guys are really, I was going to say, you guys are really busy. Yeah, we are busy. It's good. It's really interesting stuff. It sounds really like really fun, fun yeah. to learn stuff. It really is. Yeah. yeah so. Except the Emerald Ash War. It's a depressing mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's horrible. It's just that we're moving toward. Yeah. Is there any worry that when they finish off the ash trees, it feels get hungry and move on to another species? I've heard that's a possibility, or I've heard they just, that's that. I just don't know yeah, whether... Morph into something else. Like they move to something else, areas. or... I, I don't know. I mean, there's certainly places in the country where they've had them. Mm -hmm. and, and things have come back eventually? Yeah, but, you know, well, I understand... Because trees had that thing for a while, a long yeah, time ago, right? Um, they're they're well, they still have it. They still get it. Mm -hmm. We have some. You won't get an elm tree that lasts more than 20 years, I don't mm -hmm. think. Well, the the Dartmouth Green, I just threw a the piece there. They I, think, huge I think they elms. treated it. Uh, I think they why. treated those They're trees. They're beautiful. Oh. Yeah. You know, I, have to I just had a 40 year old elm guy. It was mm -hmm. so sad. Yeah. I had that tree when I moved there in 1987. That tree was there, and it was not too young at the time. And it just died in the last two years. Wow. Yeah. Really sad. Yeah. So just out there. Yeah. And waiting. Mm -hmm. so, so that's not good stuff. No. You know, so but but what we don't want to happen is what happened with the chestnuts, where they cut them all. Yeah. In Pennsylvania, yeah, Vermont, and in New England, they cut all the chestnuts down there. Right. And that was. Well, it's really out. important that forests and parks. And I guess they have been doing this. Communities kids that to the foresters because uh, my forester actually wanted to cut all mine down in 2013. No, 2011, because of the impending. EAB right. infection, and I said, well, what if one's disease resistant? It could be the one that saves the species. And I so also we, heard, uh, you know, we the, need they, they cut them down in the Midwest. They cut them all down. I know they did. And you know what? The Amarash borer is back. I don't know what the, what it's on. I mean, maybe it's well, just a little know what we're baby. Doing. I don't know. But well, that's what I heard. Pass the message on to the full conservation commission. How much we appreciate all the work they're doing, and it's really yes. important work. I will. All right, who wants to do okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you need a refill, Stephanie? Yeah, you need a refill? What? I, I, go. I offered Peggy if she wanted to go because she works and I do not. <laughs> I, mean, no. I don't know if she wanted to go first. Well, she come on, Peggy. Hey, when are you going to retire? Ever. You'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I will be. 
I got two full time jobs right now. I don't think you know how to retire. Nope. Come up, come up, sit up front. No, I'm sorry. Okay, you want to budget stuff. The only budget stuff that we have, as I understand it, is what we pay our secretary. How is he doing? Well, he's back to almost there. He's got still a few issues that he's going to take care of. But he, is he back to the meeting? I know the last one meeting I went to, he was like, you couldn't do it. I'm looking for a Yeah, the last meeting we had, you weren't there, but he was. And, um, so he's doing better. Yeah, back to school. Okay. And I don't know how much your budget is for him. I think it's, um, and then we have, it's we've been having our um, <coughs> meetings, you know, for our committee itself. Not here, because every time we want to have it here, this it's is busy. busy. Well, hopefully so we've been going over to the um, East Cows? Yes. Are they charging you? They've been, they said they were going to bill you for 10 bucks. 10 bucks a shot. Because you can use Maple Corner Community Center for free. Not until they fix that stupid lock. We tried that, opening oh. that door. You couldn't with get that. in? We could not get in. Oh. I was threatening to just break the window. Yeah. something I had in my car and just pinch off the lock and then the end of it. Well, there, there's also so the we ended up having to call John, who had to come over and unlock the door, and then he had to head the time. What was the problem with it? It's the stupid lock. You gotta punch the, the numbers in yeah. and do this, and it doesn't be. work. Oh. So, right now, so who's doing? Right now, Tim isn't submitting any bills then because he hasn't been doing any minutes. But we right. have, we have budgeted a thousand for the whole year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then you probably want to put in fifty dollars more for the building in East Dallas till you guys get the hall fixed. Yeah. Hopefully, that will be next summer. Maybe. It's gonna be warm. Yeah. Where is that in the budget that we have here? What? The DRB. Just yes. on, on page three. Oh, page okay. three. Under zoning administration. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, okay, in East Cal's, and I know it's ten dollars a shot. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, you know, the automatic community center is open to a public use for free. You just have to call Rick Winston. Right, and it's an easy. He just get, he tells you where the key is. <laughs> the yeah. padlock, and it's very easy. <laughs> I have my own damn key for East Callis. I don't yeah. have to buck go right oh, around everywhere oh, else. Oh, no, okay. Hate to tell you. Uh, okay. I've been doing it for years. Um, the other thing is, you've got to do something with respect to our uh, one member that we haven't seen for two and a half years. <laughs> yes, we sent him a letter basically saying thank you for your service. If we haven't heard from you, I sent it to you. Sent yeah, you sent us a copy of it, but we, right. we don't know whether he said okay, goodbye. Or he hasn't responded to any form of communication, whether it be email, telephone, or written letter. He has not responded at what? all. Okay. Yeah. So we would appreciate if you have any recommendations. Everybody put their thinking caps on about another member. And let us know. Is that you need one? Or well, we right actually now. should fill it up and have, then we have some who's, extra. Who is the vice chair of the DRB? Good question. Because yeah. I, I looked on the website when I was trying to send out notices yeah. to people to come. I was like, oh, who's the vice chair? You should have a vice chair. Okay. Um, and we should put it, you know, post it on the website. But I forget, Steve Owens is basically missing in, missing in action. We tried desperately to contact him and we got no response. So that's two MIAs. Who? He says Steve Owens. Yeah, Steve Owens. Yeah. Well, as long as he was with the school, we had it, but right. he got done. He's a principal. He's a principal in Albany. Albany, is it? Yeah. Who else is there? Nobody else, right? That's missing? No. Well, that's Walt, that's good. Walt right now is in um, Vietnam. Who? Walt. Walt, right. But, he's, <laughs> but he, but he yeah. participates, right? Everybody else. Walt. 
Yes, it goes on vacations to all these makes more sense. funky yeah. countries on the other side of the world. Yeah, right. And sometimes he's not around. I thought there was another there meeting. There has to be a meeting. Yeah. yeah. It was just one. So do you have regular oh. meetings at the, the, is it open to everybody or are you just having this? No. We only okay. have meetings no, when they're needed. Right. We don't have yeah. monthly meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this year, for some reason, they're not putting in any applications right off. For, I mean, for the DRB to review? Correct. They're probably yeah. waiting until the middle of winter, like they normally do. But <laughs> they should be getting their you know, permit it. stuff in because when you go to a bank to get some financing, they want all that information right. bingo. They don't want you just saying, oh, well, I've got to do this, and oh, well, I've got to go here and get permits and stuff. That doesn't work. No, people find that out hardly. They do. So other than that, we're, ju we're just waiting Good for long. some new revisions to the zoning. Well, that's good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Thanks, Thanks, Peg. Peg. Thanks for staying on there for yeah. a zillion years. Well, Jeez. every time I wanted to get done, everybody else got done. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, so who I, who wasn't on there is Ruth and Barbara Wheaton. Both? They're still on there. Oh, they, okay. So I just wasn't like, yeah. focused on that one. So used to seeing them there, I didn't. Yeah, okay. I just saw who was. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. Of course, of course. Okay. Planning Commission. What do you want to know? <clears throat> What's, What's going, going on? on? What is your needs? What are your wish list? Well, um, I thought first, though, I'd like to share with you who's on the Planning Commission, because I don't know. Ron Shaw is um, the youngest, both in age and in longevity being on the planning commission and he is a CPA. So he's our kind of systems type of person. And then there's Gary who's got the history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the history I think. And so he brings along a perspective. He's also an engineer. And so he's, he's got a lot of, of that perspective. Um, Melanie Keene is on the <coughs> board um, commission. She's our lawyer. <laughs> and keeps us um, on track with looking at what the state regs are and that we're going to uh, have it accurate. Um, and uh, John, of course, um, McAuliffe is on it and he's our mapping guru really, um, but because of his being the zoning administrator as well, he brings a lot of the issues that he has with certain things with that that brings up certain things. And then there's me and my background was in medical information systems where I was both in sales and then a product marketing development uh, uh, pro um, product. So I'm kind of in a process, I'm a, a process person I guess. And kind of see the um, overall forest and I also happen to see the individual trees. So far <clears throat> we've been waddling in the weeds of um, sure. regulations um, and it's taking on a personal level it's going much slower than I wanted it to go but we sit in our meetings and we reach a consensus where we all finally agree on what's going to how it's going to be and how it's going to look um, we've been working on the shoreland uh, overlay which is, it would replace what we have in Shoreland. It would be a, a, a Shoreland overlay equal to almost what's in the state. A few differences. We had a, a pretty successful meeting at Adamant. Um, that was very good meeting. You guys did a great job. Yeah, and we um, want to plan for another meeting with the uh, number 10, mm -hmm. Nelson Pond and Curtis Pond. Uh, residents, and we'll probably do that all at one. Uh, I think it's all our yeah. time can do. But we want to do the same thing where we have a map. Um, we found that having a map explains a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> and where the village districts are. So um, I would say <laughs> we're on our eighth revision of a draft of the Shoreland. We call it SHROD, the Shoreland Overlay <laughs> District. Um, and I've asked the crew, we're meeting tomorrow night, I've asked them to look at it for sensibility and I've met with Stephanie. We've taken into account um, 
conservation and lakes and streams issues relative to the Shroud. Um, we're looking at a minor rewrite on 3.14, which is the streams, what we're going to do with streams and how we're going to handle that. Um, we've had a couple interesting conversations. Melanie has um, interviewed a few people from ANR River area, and they really believe... Is that the river corridors? No, that's something different yet. Uh, it's, it's relative to buffers around our streams. Um, but their feeling is it's much more important that we also have a um, stormwater erosion control um, or, or not ordinance, but um, bylaw. And I think um, you mean working. Part of zoning? Yes. Um, storm, say that again, stormwater what? Stormwater and erosion control. Stormwater management and erosion control. And, and PEG has outlined to me certain areas where DRB looks at it. I mean, there's like 500 areas, and I think we'd like to consolidate it into one area that says all districts have to follow some kind of stormwater management erosion control for new development. We have to specify it it's under new development. But the importance that we're learning is that the erosion control puts just as much sediment and phosphorus into the stream waters as does everything else. So. Um, we're adding probably, we've got a draft of something, which we still haven't gone over yet, Stephanie, but we are working on, you know, the three point, which is going to be a new addition to that. And I'm hoping we'll hear back from you guys. Um, we have gotten, and are real, will be reviewing, and I'm, I don't know, it'll probably be January before we get to that. Um, the state has issued a new river corridor. Uh, area, so we're probably going to be writing, um, taking out our current flood hazard zone, and we're going to probably write a whole new article, um, which will combine um, the flood hazard and river corridor. And we, the river corridor is important because then we get our extra five percent in EVAD. And that would be to update the zoning rights. Yes, all of this is zoning regulation right. update. Okay. And you're planning on doing it all together? Yes. I'm not going to, uh, you know, to do things piecemeal, I'm just going to try to get it all done. It's, and I, it's, but Shoreland you're doing it separate? No. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be listed under water quality issues. Okay. And I, I mean, ma we've got it written. It's a matter of just getting through, slogging through the detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. So operationally, in terms of a budget, um, we only have 800 bucks in our operation right. budget. Um, we don't spend a whole lot. Some of us go to meetings. I don't even know if we put in that we <laughs> we go We're to the trying. meetings. In. Well, um, yeah, you should get reimbursed. Yeah, but I don't think we remember to even bring it in for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, when we mail out, we're going to have to mail out to our neighboring towns uh, all of the new regs. We have to send the stuff to ACCD and we have to send the stuff to the Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So there will be mailing expenses. Um, you have to do more coverage? Oh, yeah. You have to send you do. it. There's a whole bylaw adoption process. Oh, yeah. There's somebody on the Planning Commission needs to take ownership of. Mm. I thought the administrative assistant here was going to do that in times mm -hmm. past, but you're telling me that now that we're all going to be in control of that process. Well, I think we need to work on it together, but there really isn't anybody right now. I mean, I'm, that would probably be my role was to help you with work on that. Okay. Um, just because we don't have any. Well, when the time comes, right? Well, you and I can talk about which it is time which comes. is important because you're dinged if your process isn't right. Right. Um, and, and we've had a problem before. With yes. Doing so, the process right, so, so I'm not going to have that happen again. No. Um, that's what I'm saying. We really want to make sure we manage that well. I would like to find. Um, Jen, you and I talked about at some point, and not right now, but there's not going to be any zoning changes for this town meeting, correct? Correct. And we talked at some point about wouldn't it be a wonderful wish list to hire somebody to look at? I was just getting to that. The, okay, the town plan thing. Okay. Yeah. 
what I wanted to do was find someone who will type up the regulations in a way that, um, well, we have people who have done it before, but it is a hard chore. And I don't know, time-wise, whether that person will be wanting to do that. And we'd like to do hyperlinks, whereby when you're reading, um, when you're reading the bylaw, and we say you want, we want you to, we want the owner to go to the shoreland regs, item appendix D. We hit a click, mm -hmm. click it, and it would come up so that the people can see it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, I, I mean, some somebody people, on the community commission was doing that. Yes, and I, I think the process, um, I think it's a little more difficult for, for him to do now. And so I would like to eventually have that be uh, offloaded. I don't know what the cost would be, but I'd like to at least put a couple hundred dollars extra into the budget for that purpose. Now, there's another thing that we have always wanted to do that we haven't gotten to, but it's is getting an online um, building, uh, building permit, getting all the permits online, and doing the same kind of thing that says, as they're filling in their permit to do their whatever, their mm -hmm. new shed or their building or whatever, it clicks and goes to our interactive map. Mm -hmm. They can find who their uh, adjoining uh, uh, neighbors and abutting neighbors are. The addresses are there. The parcel numbers are there. Um, what, res what zoning districts are they at? We've had it discussed, we've discussed it, but again, it's that hyperlink, it's that ability to have that computer technology. The, the, the Do you think it's only going to cost a couple hundred dollars? No. Well, the, per the permit would be more. I'm sure to do that. I would think permit. just doing, if you're talking about, you're talking about, are you talking about zoning or are you talking about planning to have somebody type it up and put in hyperlinks and things? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the zoning regs, exactly which is right. planning. How many pages is that? It's going to be 120. See, I, that's going to cost more than a couple hundred dollars, I think. Well, I don't know. I'll, okay. Don't I'll, I'll ask for 2,000. I want 2,000 in my operational budget. I don't know. I, I have no clue. No, I don't either. I'm just saying I can't imagine somebody typing all, up 120 pages for $200. I'm putting in hyperlinks. Well, and hyperlinks, that part's not hard. No, it's not hard, no. but uh, typing up 120 pages That's and doing part. that is a lot of work. That's Katie. Katie, what do you think? Is it, none of it is electronic right now? It's oh, yeah, we're all on electronic. Yeah. I mean, so it's we more. could give you a whole Word document. We have it on thumb drive and whatever. So we'd go to a thumb drive. Somebody could could take what we have, and it's reformatting. It's not retyping. Mm -hmm. oh, I used okay. to do it's it. One, it's it's reformatting. What, they, what yeah. the Planning Commission does fine. is they propose changes to the zoning, mm -hmm. they well, give it to the select board, the select board owns it. So when I was the recording secretary, well, I mean, you have $800 so I did it. Mm -hmm. There's 800 still in the budget. Is that something you want to work on, Katie? I'd love to. Wow. Um, okay, could you work, could you and Jan connect? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. There. That piece is done. So operationally, that's that's about where we are um, and, and what we're doing now. In terms of, you're right. Um, it, by the time we have our hearing, mm -hmm. which I don't think will be until uh, it, it would be late next year, if, even if late we, next year, okay. you know, I I would expect that that this gets voted on. I, I don't know if you have a special election in uh, early. Twenty twenty in March of twenty twenty. I don't know. I mean, I don't. It de you know, because we've got right. our timeline in terms of we have our hearing yeah. and then it's da da da. Unless so you're talking calendar year twenty twenty, not fiscal year. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking calendar year twenty twenty, and that would be my guess, just mm -hmm. because of we're slow, we're we're very careful and cautious. It doesn't go as fast as I want it to, and right. I've had to really step back and take a deep breath and say it's the way it's, it is. Yeah. I mean, it is the way it is. Stop. Yeah. Some yeah. things just go at a snail's right. pace and there's just no way around it, unfortunately. And then there's the awareness that we have had um, that, that there will be a town plan amendment eventually. Um, when's, the time, when's the next time to do our update? You don't have, we don't have to see 2016 and 8, we don't have to really do anything until 2024. 
whatever the word is, you know, energy. Substantial deference. Yeah, substantial deference. Um, we've, ha we've had, Eric at the regional plan has done a very good job of drafting what would be good, taking our existing plan, and he believes that we don't need a separate energy. We can use what we have and amend what we have. We just have to do a couple little things. And, in, and that essentially it wouldn't be um, a whole lot of work. But at the time that we do that, that's when we have to do forest integrity. Um, and so, it, I, I, you know, we just, our bandwidth, there's five of us, and right. that's all we, we're, we can't do two things at once. So it's gonna come after yeah. this. And, um, and I worry because um, I think there are some people that are getting, we're all getting a little tired. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I think, uh, I, I'm worried that Ron may not want to stay on, and so we need to have a group of people, for some reason people don't like the idea of planning, and I think part of, part of it is, <laughs> it's we, we, we are in the weeds of language of writing regulations and a lot of people they don't really want regulations they don't want land use regulations right, and there's right. a lot of resistance to it without realizing that planning actually is more than that and we have been so in the weeds of writing ordinances we are not planning in the strict sense of the word and I think that's to the detriment of callous but the history of this planning commission is one that has never done that. Right, I mean it's always kind of playing catch up and right. all that. Um, so I'm here right now, this is just Jan Olson, yeah I represent planning but, but these are just some of my wild ideas of what could be planned if we were planning for, for what does Callis want to be like mm -hmm. in, in the case of sustainability. I really dislike Central Vermont Regional and all of the planning that the state does and they talk about economic growth. Well, hello. Where are we going to grow in this area? We, we have five villages that compete for everything. There's no central core to what is callous. And so how do you do that? And we have Good three point. village centers. Right. Designated. Designated village centers and none of are, them and have to come. None of them. Have, what? Another to come. Another to come. Which village? Adamant. They're already a village designated village. So this, is, this is the, we did the CL. Yeah, this is an historic place. district. Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah. And I, I know they want to do that with these counts. And I'm like, you know, what? I, I'm not sure exactly what that means. And, and we have the three designated village centers. None of them have ever. The people that are there, and I don't know if planning is supposed to help with this, none of them have asked for grants. If you're going to do a, a cluster development, if you're going to do a, a, a development within that, which is what the designated village centers mm -hmm. are for, that's where you do it. Maple Corner, Adamant, and East Callis. Right. Well, East Callis were limited. Right, I think part of the CLG grant, once it gets put on this, register and all that stuff, it opens up the doors to get additional grants, I think, which could work to do what you're talking about. I don't know about that. I don't know what the historical grants are, and I don't know anything else about any of the other grants, especially when there's Better Connections grant, mm -hmm. and there's all these other grants that are there. So, I'm just saying that there's a lot of things in terms of planning. Where do you want economic growth, if you want such a word? I like to think about it as economic sustainability, and basically, our sustainability is in our agricultural, our, our forest, and um, <coughs> uh, along that line. And I think we have to recognize the little town of Orange absolutely said in their town plan, we can't meet the economic growth, the, the housing, 
Because basically the only way we can get improved economic revenue is if we get more people involved mm -hmm. and we get more people in here. You mean more people to live? Yeah. And I don't know exactly where that's going to be. Yeah, I don't know where these are. Unless you live. want, and if you want to cluster it and not have a lot of, you know, three acre lots along the line, mm -hmm. then you, you, you've got to develop the infrastructure for it. <coughs> so, so, um, so what happens if you put a statement like that in, like Orange did? What happens? The plan got accepted. I mean, it, it's a matter of as, as if you label out what it is you can and cannot do. Right, so there's um, no harm in putting it in there. It, right, but it, you know, our town plan is, is what it is So right now, so we have to live with it. So, um, in looking at all of this, uh, I guess I'm kind of like, you know, well, anyway, I would like to have um, a long-term planning budget where you have a conservation fund and you put in a certain amount of money each year. I would like planning to have the same. I think that when we, I was looking at the state ACCD, and the reason for this is when you go for grants and you have to have a 20% share, where is that money coming from? So what would it be called? Long-term planning grant, I guess. I don't know, a lot for, for grants. Not grant. You said you're talking about fund. Fund, a fund, plan. Like, plan. like a like yeah. a conservation fund. Yeah, we generalized yeah. grant yeah. fund too. You know, just you know, if you guys need money one year, and then you guys need money in the next year, whatever we could have. I mean, it could be a joint thing. Whereas, yeah. let's cool. say that conservation cool. comes up with an EAB, uh, an Elm Ashbor plan. There's going to have to maybe be some budgets for that. Is it conservation, or is it going to? It, mm -hmm. If there's planning, I mean. So I guess what I'm asking is saying I think there should be a fund that will be there for long range planning. for long range planning and for the ability to match grants if we ever get a planning commission that does that. <laughs> well, so a long long range planning fund. Yeah. Grant, grant match fund. Grant I mean, there's a big, or a grant grant match there's a big grant difference match between fund. whether we call it a grant fund or we call it a fund, like Conservation Commission fund, is just a fund that the town controls the purse strings on. Grants require, are, are altogether different. Some are 20%, 20% in kind. A grant match fund. It's so, not a can grant. Can I finish what I was okay, saying? Okay. So I think you got to, I think you might be better off if we had a fund set up like we do with conservation that a certain amount of money gets put into. Does it mean you can't still then apply for a grant? Right. In other words, the criteria for the using of that money would right. be for planning. the ability to do um, for to for for um, you know, the con contrib contributory faction of the grant. Right. I mean, part know, of the guidelines yeah. could be to match grants or right or something like that. So I think you'd get more bang for the buck by right. doing it as a fund, where you get yes. so much money put in a year, like yeah. you do for conservation. So. My, my plan, I mean, after reading that, I, I was out on the state plan. The, you know, ACCB has their big planning manual, which, which is new. It's a nice little manual for planning. Um, 500 pages? Huh? <laughs> uh, and, and actually, it's one of the recommendations they have for municipal plan or planning commissions that they have a special grant for that kind of purpose. So I thought, well, okay, I'll come here and ask for $5,000 for that for this first year. For the fund, mm -hmm. and then we will get it. I but, I understand that, but right. you don't do anything unless you ask. Right, and that's why I said everybody come. What's your wish list? What do you want? You know, we can't. We don't want the budget to go up significantly, but there are certain things that you have to do as a town to keep town government running. So. Well, that fund should make us money. Right, in the end, I mean, it that should. fund should be right. a percentage of a larger amount, right? So. It would. Well, the sum total oh. revenues in that fund would be a percentage of a larger amount, right? Because it's going to leverage yeah. other people's money. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, she's got all the words today. Leverage. That's the word. Right, right. Um, Thank you. It yeah. would include things <laughs> like if we keep working on the speed radar signs. Right. Okay. On the what? 
Oh, Jan and I are working on a project for you. Yeah, time. and I, but I think the speed <laughs> radar sign. The speed said. radar speed signs radar. raise callus. The oh, 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 Jan and I have been awesome. looking at and so, we'll seeing what we can do to get those. So I've, love it. Yeah. I've started with, um, we're, we're seeing if we meet the conditions. I still haven't heard it from Nate. Yeah. And that's like a maze and getting, truly getting cross right. Well, and Woodbury, if Woodbury can do it, we can do it. Right. But their cost that I shared with you is, is, I don't know who paid for that, whether that was a grant mm, or right. whether... Well, CDRPC might know. It, it well, it, got well it. I've already reached out to Dan, and Dan gave me the phone, gave me the information mm -hmm. to talk to this Amy Gamble, and then Woodbury did it. So, but Jan and I are working on it. Okay. When we have something concrete, we'll bring it Yeah, Michael Gray probably would know. Yeah. Or the yeah, town we went through. Skip. Or the town clerk. Skip. Skip, the skip was the... Skip, is the, skip uh, was involved. Yeah. He, he was the honcho, and he sent oh. me all of... He sent me copies of all of a lot of their stuff and their right. bills and what they found. And so they have to. And, and they have to set away, up. Get right. Well, I mean, they have to set up these counter things, which they already did when we had the remember the ERC thing and East Callis CVRPC came and set up the counters. So we've already got that information. I'm hoping that it'll last. We may have to do it again, though, and that's what I'm wondering. I mean, we haven't heard back on it. So, but that planning that planning fund right. would. Possibly even be applied to this right. because you're you're I mean, looking the fund at also gives you leverage right. to apply for other things to say look we can make our match right we can use the money out of this fund so. and I guess the last thing um, or to mention is what I, I attribute I look I you know there. The people that are now currently on your planning commission may no longer be there after three, two or three or four years. Right. I can't remember. At some what point, we're probably going to have to look at and I think a position. A, 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 yeah, a professional. I don't know. Um, well, it's getting harder and harder to find what there is anything. and what the cost is, and I don't know what's involved. But the other thing is, if there's no planning commission in a town, and you remain a member CBR, of the CV of the of the Regional Planning Commission, by default, the Regional Commission becomes your planning commission to the municipality. Right. Mm -hmm. Do they own it? They charge you. <coughs> and I don't know if they are. They but just hopefully, said you hopefully you won't get there. For but it. I just think it's it's yeah. something that I think the select board should be aware of. Um, I'm I'm a little concerned when we get down if we if we lose Ron, um, we'll be down to four. We're going to find five. We're right. Have to find yeah, it's hard to find people. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. What are the what are the in that table of conflicts? What because are what other boards conflict with planning such that you can't be on both? I don't think I do. No. I'd have to look at that chart. But so I you can be you anything. could be for example on DRB and planning. Right. Yeah, I'm an alternate. Okay. I'm okay. two alternates, okay. and I still think that it's not quite right, but that's okay. You want well, to be on the, the right. select board can be on the planning commission. Right. Yeah, and select board. Yeah. It's not a conflict. Honestly, that was not a conflict for me to be on the ERB. No, I asked the broad question. Right. Yeah. Because see, anything that we do, if you want, if you were filing something and there was a conflict with whatever the DRB decided, it goes to the select board. She can't talk. She can't. Be she has to recuse herself. Right. From because both. she's on the DRB. Well, it was going to go to environmental court or something right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> but you would still. It, Right, but the, but the way that the LCT is or the statute has defined it at this point, it's not a conflict. And I only signed up because you were always running low on members. Well, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been since there's been like front porch form recruitment. Yeah, I mean, is it time maybe again to bring this up? It's usually a good time to do it around town meeting. Right, because that's when people have town on I mean, their I mean, I had been out on front porch form three or four times. Yeah. There was only one response. Um, or two, and, and then I, I invited them to come, but they never ever came to the meeting. I mean, the idea would be come sit with us for yeah, several yeah. months and then make your decisions. Sure, I mean, right. it's what Paul Rose did, basically. Right. Right. Um, and I think to answer your question, the only thing I know for sure, listers cannot be on the select board. Listers? Uh -huh. On the planning commission? On the select, select board. board. Yeah, there's some other. Well, I don't think a zoning administrator could be in a DRB because our right our zoning administrator is right is a right. permit. Bill. So I mean, I don't think we need to get into all that anyway. tonight, but but that's that's where I just yeah. where no, you can hear what. Well, my this is why I wanted are. folks to come so we could have these discussions. And I, actually, it worked out really well to have the three groups yeah, here yeah. at the same time. So 
Yeah, the question. ultimate plan of getting everybody here was well worth it. I have a question just thinking about stuff like that as Jan was talking, um, and it's just a minor thing, but it's likely we will have printing costs. Mm -hmm. And in the past, we've just come either come to you and said, we have these printing costs, would you cover mm -hmm. them? When they were, um, I think the Natural Resources Inventory, we took that money out of the conservation we fund did. because it did meet the criteria, but we always hate spending money from the conservation fund for things like that just because yeah. the conservation fund it's is needed for conserving yeah. Yeah. land. But So I don't know how you want to handle that. Call it an operational budget for the printing. <laughs> right. No, I mean, that's, should we have that or should we just come well, to I think you? We, well, it's, it's usually relatively minor. We, we just, like for planning commission, we just call it planning commission expenses and we just call it the same thing. Yeah, if and you that's don't what use it, you roll it over. Right. Right. It's not well, no, you usually get sucked up. Yeah, or we'll suck. Because right now you have <laughs> Conservation Commission, the $200. To me, that's what that is, the Planning Commission expenses, printing. Because we did have to pay for printing for that really great report that Matt did. Yeah, that was, and that was two different... Right, yeah. so that's to me, that's what that's yeah. for. Well, I'm just wondering if it should be more. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. So what, are there what? any other questions? <clears throat> no, you guys, and thank all of the okay. Planning Commission people. And I just, I'll get in touch with you as we get closer to meeting. But I can, I can send you what we've done so far, and, and maybe if you look, um, if you look at our on the town webpage, mm -hmm. that all of the zoning rights are there. Mm -hmm. When we issue this in, it has to be retyped on that one so that mm -hmm. everybody can see the changes, which makes it awful to read. So then I always want to do a clean copy, yeah. which makes it easier to read. Right. Mm -hmm. no, so. Katie's really wonderful at this kind of stuff, so okay. if she's willing to yeah. stop, yeah. help. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. And she charges us a good price, too. All we have to do is babysit for her kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is all stuff you can do at home, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, ladies, for coming. We really Thank appreciate you. it. All good work. Everybody is so dedicated Thank to your you. support. Thank you. We're so dedicated yeah, good to see you all. to helping Callis. That's right. Oh, yeah, our environment. Yes. Well, just everything. You had a question with regards to Memorial Hall. Don't ask me what's the matter with the other group, but we've been ready to roll for a month and a half. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're, gonna, they're just sitting there. I was told that they were going to have something done by the end of October. And well, it's number ended, one, right? they didn't, there were conditions. Yes. And I assume that they didn't meet the money condition. I, don't I, heard, they, I heard that they did meet the money condition. Well, I don't think this is everybody right. said I would cough up, but right. it was supposed to be X amount of dollars in the bank. I don't, I, yeah. I don't know. And the other thing, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, oh, we really can't be having this conversation tonight about no one else. But so we appreciate your working with the town on it, though. Yeah. You know, well, <laughs> come and may oh. not go. Well, can I, while they're still here, let me give you some other ideas that I think the town needs to be thinking about. Okay. I mean, it's, it's part of planning. And yes, it's way out to left field. That's okay. It's way out to left field. There's two things way out to left field. I'd eventually like to see the town buy uh, the East Callis Recreational Field and make it into a town park or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. and that Is field. It and there's that little, and there's, huh? Is it for sale? No, I'm just saying in the oh. future you don't know until you offer. You have to check out the, the family, but the family yeah. and that particular family no. is getting Oh, right. Yeah. And right. and they have that little green across from the store. From the store, I mean, there's yeah. right. or even the post office, and we if it becomes the town building, and we don't have to follow mm -hmm. through and get a rent for it all. I mean, whatever, you know. Okay, that's one idea. Mm -hmm. The second idea, there are a lot of Airbnbs in this town. There yeah. are a lot of people that rent weekly, and we have guests using all of our facilities. I would like to think about a local option. Uh, room and board tax that gets either 0.5 of 1% of the room and board tax and bring it in as revenue to this town. Yeah. Now this would the planning fund. Well, well, wait a minute. What? For the planning fund. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this would only be for the Airbnbs? There's or? Airbnb. No, it would be like for Peg Tassie who comes out. I mean, you look at Front Porch and all of these ads 
for people that are for weekly ads right. during yeah. the summertime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I we would have to find an inventory of all those those businesses that do bed and breakfast and that kind of thing. But they have to follow, I think, this is what I've heard, they have to follow the room and board taxes and meals, of the state, meals, and meals, meals 15 or whatever mm -hmm. percent it is. If Montpelier can add a local option tax that adds to it for their city, Callis could have one. It can be minor. It can I be think it needs five to be tenths of one percent. Blessed by the legislature. Yeah, it does, but you have to yeah. propose it to the legislature. <coughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. So I'm just yeah. thinking of it That's as a idea. way of revenue for the city. It's a great idea. Or for the town. Yeah. Yeah. So that could cause some exciting I meetings. Sure couldn't it? Really? You could bring that up at the planning meeting with Somebody the say Curtis Potts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, right. So anyway, so that's my, some of my way out things. Yeah. You know? no, it's just, no, it's good. All good stuff. You have to consider everything. Okay. You really do. Watch out. Thank you. Now Watch I better walk out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right thank you. Bye. Nice. Thank you. Right. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Well, that was good. That was it was good. It was great timing to have the three. Yeah, three. that's what I thought. Yeah. Having timing. them all come in together. Yeah. Because they all kind of work off each other. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, any thoughts or anything from that discussion? I mean, I think I've made some notes, you made notes, you've got good minutes as always, so that we may want to play around with some budget line items, add some items. You know, we, we can do anything we want in the planning of this budget. Then when reality hits, then you go in with the red pen and you make the cuts. You were going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, there's no harm in initially putting things in, some new line items, whatever, and see what we come up with. And then prioritize. And then that yeah. allows us to prioritize right. rather than doing it. Yeah. And across yeah, the I board. Can ever finish a sentence? Thank Sorry. you. Um, so. I can work with Sandra to add some line items if you guys are want to do that, and she can do them in like red, mm -hmm. which is what she's done with some of these other line items, independent audit, um, just so we highlight them based on these discussions. Because eventually we're going to have to have Sandra come in maybe two meetings in a row and meet with the board, come up with all of these proposed figures for FY20. What's the bottom line? And we're going to have to do the same thing with the highway. This is what we've done typically. And you put in all the items that, oh, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yep. And then you see the bottom line and you say, oh, no. Where do we We adjust? need to yep. make some adjustments. Right. Wouldn't this be wonderful? But obviously, we always try to keep the town's budget from going up very much, if at all. And health insurance costs are going to be going up. Sharon's favorite subject. Well, and we haven't heard anybody say they need less. No, and so, you won't probably. No, we won't. So, all right. So, should we delve into um, the credit card policy? I really would like to get that one done because we're already using a credit card, and we went through it um, a couple, not last meeting, but the meeting before. You guys went through it as a group, and yep. I been, that was when I couldn't be here, and I right. went through it before. Right. So we made some, um, I don't think we did it. That page looked to me like it's not part of the policy. Right. I think that was the thing, if you look at the top, what does it say? I think I put that in there so that it's background, it's background information. Right. Just make sure when we finalize, we make it out. Right. So if we can go, who's, are you running the show, Cliff? There we go. There we go. Can you, if you can make the changes, I'll just show it up here. So I, I spoke with Denise about this um, policy on the phone Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Um, and you know, this is, what is this all about? This is all about making sure that we don't fill up the card with a lot of money, so the five thousand dollar limit prevents that. It's um, not and it's also it's about, to my mind, embezzlement. And there have been some cases around the state um, where there have been people that have embezzled town and, and electric company funds. Okay. Um, and I know 
I believe at least one of those instances involved somebody either you know, taking out another card. You know, something comes in the mail, here you can get a credit card with a $20,000 limit and a town official, an electric company official, fills it out. And also there's another credit card that the select board or the board, whatever board didn't know about. And that's easy to do. So, I mean, it almost seems like there needs to be language in here that I mean, maybe it's kind of in the theme there that no other cards ever, no matter what comes in, no staff are allowed to take out cards or augment limits. Um, I think, I think it's in there, but I, I'm stuck with that. I don't have a problem with redundancy at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you say it one way, and then you say, say it any many ways. Yeah. Many, many ways all get into the same concept. Mm -hmm. right? Because it is, it absolutely says, two cards on one account. That's, I'm pretty sure. And there shall be no others. I mean, it really right. So, so let's think of three other ways to say that because yeah. I agree. The time, the time to be ogres is now before yeah. there's an issue. It's yeah. not personal. Yeah. There's no. But how do you get banks to? I mean, if we have a credit. If any town has a credit card policy, and the employees don't follow it, yeah. because the bank sends them a. Mm -hmm. Oh. I know. Wells Fargo sends you something you in the mail. You fill it out. But can the does can a will a bank accept a credit card application? Do they know not to accept a credit card application without maybe select board approval? No. Now, who knows? What it's really about it's, it's is forgery. The, is being yeah, just, is being really clear and really tight as to the town's policies so that there's no mistake. There's no you know confusion on the employees' part. No, I get that piece of it. I just wonder how you educate all these credit card companies you not to. Can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. and they give they cards to 16 year olds. People. True. True. And jobs. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, they send them out all the time. Yeah. We all know that. Once there's a game, yeah. we probably get them now, for all I know. Yeah. I mean, we might. You know. We just don't. I don't know. All right, so here we are. We got that. I think we're all in agreement about, you can never say it too many times. So, this so is are we going to take a stab here, or are we going to... Credit card holders and limits. Does that say enough, or do you want to say it? In? It says credit cards. I just want it to be one credit card. Only one credit card may be issued uh, to the town from well, one bank. One no the other, there can't be any secondary or... Well, the issue, John, though, if you go back to the outline we got from Sandra, is that it has to be issued in somebody's name. And so we did it this way, all based on what Sandra told us. Yeah. But um, the town, so the town clerk will have one in the town clerk's name, town treasurer right. will have one in the right. town treasurer's name. And then literally, they are the only two people authorized to use right. it. They if can we have, narrow right. that down to one, no, I, I'm not one. That's one card. One, one, one. Two, two, two one physical account. cards. One account. One account. Right, 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 right. It's one household. Two right. people. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's yeah, we're all saying the same thing. Yeah. And it says that two cards. Somewhere it, it did say a uh, single account. I'm pretty sure it said that. So let's we can just make a note and make sure we see that as we go through. Well, where would it say single? Well, there's other sections. Total credit. No, that works. Total credit limit of five. Right. And we're single. It's two cards. Oh, you can do a minute a word search. Right? Uh, well, but but let's. I'm gonna make that. I th I maybe I'm making it up, but I feel like it was in there somewhere. Well, further on. Katie was doing a word search. Right. And I'm not saying single. Mm -hmm. It might say. It might be implied through some other mm -hmm. phrase. Okay. So then we select make, board authorizes two credit cards issued on a single account for the town account. Where is that clip? No, I'm saying that's just Yeah, sure. Oh, we can do that okay. but somewhere else it's somewhere else as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, credit card use. On a single account. Yeah. All right, everybody good with credit yep. card card holders and stuff? Yeah. Credit card use. It's not doing the place the right. Like for instance, we picked out the the staff picked out a phone system, and you need to order it online and use a credit card. 
so it works out. This is, you know, that's exactly what it's yep. for. Yep. And Cliff and I are aware of it because we have a meeting with the staff. Yep. You guys are aware of the new telephone system. We've talked about it. Mm -hmm. All right, credit card use. Everybody go with that. Well, hang on. The one thing that that I wanted to talk about on this one, because the two people who are authorized are the town clerk and the town treasurer, mm -hmm. the only we have no authority over the town clerk. And so that's where I was thinking that public disclosure of this misuse is important. Where are you? At the bottom of the credit card use section. A purchaser employees may be subject to disciplinary action. Up that that sentence? Up to and including dismissal from misuse, but we don't have the authority to dismiss the town. Oh, it actually says employees. Well, and we can't dismiss. Is a clerk an employee? No, or she's no, an officer. No, she's not. She's elected. It's elected. Yeah, she's an officer. So that's where public disclosure is the only tool we have, and obviously it, we would use that sparingly. Sparingly, but to have that tool, it's I still until we have the tool. Right. But why would we? I guess I'm not sure why we would put it in writing. Um, because that's a given, right? Well, we put we put employees in writing. Of the disciplinary right. action. So how do we get out an, an official? Or how about authorized users may be subject? Yeah, that's a good idea. Authorized well, they users. can't be disciplined. We can't. Dis we can. We can publicly disclose. Is my that's point. That's not discipline. No. Um, yeah. We there's no the only discipline there is for somebody who's elected that misuses it is legal action. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, public or, or not being reelected. That's. Well, but that's where public disclosure, disclosure is important. Yeah, but why would we? not just saying up and including dismissal or legal action. It just depends on whether you think that public disclosure is encompassed in that or not. Uh, to me, I to me dis public disclosure is different right. than taking legal action. I agree. Um, and you know, I, I think that's it's a decision of the select board whether to disclose or not. And, and I know I know it's it's we're just laying out the options. That's board. really all it is, is, is remind um, in but the I think, I think reminding this, what the options are. I think are. the select board has that authority independent. Anyways, yeah. You know, it's we would do that with any public official who so, embezzles. So I, I don't know if we need to put in this is you know. That's the question, is whether we would feel if the time came, again, it's really what are we gonna feel like we can do when the time comes. Yeah. If we put it in here now before it's an issue, then we'll be clear with ourselves we can do it. Right. Once it becomes an issue, all these things get a lot more they all get all, all gets very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. What can we just say any miss where it says employees? Can we say any misuse may be subject to disciplinary or legal action? Well that's not disclosure is not legal action. I know I'm not even talking I'm not talking about the, that part of Oh okay. Oh, so you just want, so just adding, so taking out employees because we've got a broader group of people. Right. Say so any misuse, maybe so to, to disciplinary or legal action up to and including dismissal, or and or, and or public disclosure. I think, it's, I think it's discipline up to and including dismissal or other legal action. I think you move legal. legal or action. and or? And legal action? Any you move legal action. He's saying combining no, clauses. So disciplinary belongs with can go up to dismissal. And then legal yeah. action can go with disclosure. Is that what you yeah, said? Exactly. Or or yeah, legal action could be with, with yes. Legal action is separate from discipline. So, so why so So you put you put up to including dismissal or other legal action as may be determined appropriate or something. Or other legal action. We don't need more after that. Yeah, okay. But we do have to add this. But I think we still want to, including public disclosure of the misuse and possible termination. I, I get that it's difficult, but I think if we have an embezzlement case, I think whether we disclose it or not is going to be the what least, is going to be the least of our issues. In terms of pain and well, you know, and it's going to be. Well, advise you what to do in that case, anyway. You know, we got a five thousand dollar credit card. I mean, that's if they if someone embezzled five thousand dollars, that's that's usually not what gets it becomes a big hoopla. It's it's 
tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars that are embezzled. And that's and that there will be probably a component of a much larger thing and and that will all be disclosed. I just we're don't, obligated to I A, I think we can't envision the scenario. We're gonna have a scenario and we're gonna sit here and sometime in the next three years and say, Well, we didn't think of this one. Um, that happens all the time. I mean, there's no harm in putting it in. There's no yeah. harm in putting it in. I'm not objecting. It's a reminder. Yeah. I think I think there's no harm in putting it in. Okay. Just put it in. Graph the line. Boom. Public disclosure. Period. Cool. Right. Right. Although we didn't. This disciplinary action. We better make sure we still like that sentence. Right. Because <laughs> right. I mean, disciplinary action. Uh, is possible disciplinary action that includes termination, right? Yeah. Well, no, up to including. I think you have to put that in there. Okay. That. So any misuse may be subject to disciplinary action, up to and including dismissal. There you go. Or other legal action for misuse. Of a credit card, including public disclosure. I think there's too yeah. many. We have misuse many twice. Misuses. Right. We, we have, have too many twice. Yeah. yeah. We have too many misuses, and we're we're misusing the word including. We're misusing the misuse. Well, we got two separate thoughts. We're talking about an employee. Right. And we're talking about public officials. So maybe you want to break it out. So we have an employee statement. Employees will be subject to disciplinary action and possible legal further legal action. Period. Public officials. You know, misusing the credit card may be subject to legal action and public disclosure. I think it's two separate concepts. We're trying to push two different types of individuals together, and they're very well, separate. We are, well, they are and they're not because they're both both positions have a card. No, no, but this is about the action we take, and the right. actions are differentiated by because of the person's I think role right, in government. Think One's an employee, and one's Elected official. But I think we were trying to make it so that it I know, but you can't do that. It's like happen. saying, having in the employee policy, oh, and if the governor embezzles, uh, we're going to, you know, it's like, really, the clerk is like the governor. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a public office. It's totally we, different we can, than an employee. We can, we can say any misuse may be subject to public, may, it's may, may be subject to public disclosure or I don't like it yet. Okay, I forgot the word may. It's right there. Okay, maybe it's subject to public disclosure. Mm -hmm. Or disciplinary action up to and including dismissal or other legal action. Okay. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Good. Do it. One misuse, one included. Yeah. That works. Okay, that works. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest piece of this policy is this clause. And that's what we're getting at. Right. That's what this is all about. Okay, payments and fees. So we're taking out that we um, prohibit any fees and we're leaving a little tiny wiggle room. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And then but it but if it gets crazy then you need to right. look at it. That's we don't know with the way Right. The economy is going. One day, credit cards could be very expensive now. Mm -hmm. Right. Security. Store in a secure location. They need to be refrigerated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and the reason I think it says secured location in the vault is because the vault has so many people going in and out doing. Mm -hmm. Different things that they need to be hidden. Do we have a lockbox on our phone? A lockbox? I, 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 I don't know. We should probably get one. Inside the vault, you mean? Yeah, it's like, it's like you, you go in a bank vault. Right. They have lock, you have your, what call those boxes? <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. You know, you, know, everyone, you got your key to your own box Safety in there. Deposit. Safety, Safety deposit, deposit box. It's like having that. You know, yeah, that's not something we have to write. I think I can't think of anything else that could be in that no. security paragraph. Rewards and points. I think we did that. Okay, each documentation. Okay.
Uh, can we go back? Uh, separation, prior to separation from the town, the cardholder will surrender the credit card to the select board or, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Or other authorized representative as determined by the board or something like that because if somebody leaves, or the clerk or treasurer. Actually, it's going to be in the vault. Or the clerk or treasurer. Right. It should be in the vault. But we need to somehow take that person's name off that credit card. Right, or clerk or treasurer, because they're the only ones that authorize to hold them, so. Right. Unless they both, you know, leave I guess maybe once. we just leave it select board and not make it complicated. Yeah, okay. It, sh it should be in the vault. Right. right. We shred it and we get the person's mm -hmm. name off. All right. So do we want to... Accept the changes and look at this next meeting, or are you ready? Okay. Just do it. Okay. okay. Who is running the controls? Katie, are you flying the plane? Who's flying this plane? <laughs> <laughs> the plane, the plane. Maybe we could just ask Katie to read it over to make sure we don't have extra words and typos. Right. And no, Katie, Katie, leave typos in. Uh, well, yeah, so, so we can resign it next time. We that. can approve it tonight, though, and just sign it next time. Absolutely. So we don't have to take any time on it. Subject to administrative changes. Mm -hmm. no. So, well, yeah, why don't you put a clean copy in the, net, in the meeting folder for next week? Mm -hmm. Tonight we can authorize or approve this pending review of the final draft or something. And then we could sign at next meeting. Or we can just wait till next meeting and approve it and sign it. Because either way, it's not getting signed tonight, right? Right. I would be satisfied if Katie said, I found one typo. We had two, <coughs> the word the appeared two, twice in a row. And That's an administrative change. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm asking. Just, yeah. Unless you find something bigger than that. But how are you? So tell us. No, you don't want me to that sentence again. That's, That's what I do, too. I know. It drives me I think crazy. We need, no, we need policy. Do not interrupt Denise's policy. I try not to interrupt you guys. <laughs> um, I don't. Are you wanting to sign it tonight, or you want to sign it next week? That's my question. Sign it next week. Yeah, that would be my suggestion. Then we sign it next week, after Katie does the final review. All right. Um... I don't have a lot of updates. We've got the phone system picked out. Mm -hmm. Did Sandra ever get that order to I work? I didn't get a chance to ask her about what the follow-up was. There was some sort of, she placed the order, AT&T said that they need to um, do some secondary level of authorization before the order is fully processed, and that involved contacting her via email. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if there was a security question involved or what, at any rate, Yes, we ordered it, and I'm just waiting for her to confirm when the estimated delivery is, so we can. Uh, and we're looking at November 9th. We were talking about November 9th. At this point, I doubt that it arrives November 9th. Let's see, nice. Yeah, today's the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's this Friday. She ordered right? it Thursday. Um, the soonest she would have been able to confirm back to them, I'm assuming, it would have been Monday. Today, which today, is crazy. So. I doubt that we see it by the night. Okay. If we do, you know, I'll make right. myself available. Okay. And we're meeting with Andy, so. Right. Now, Cliff and I are meeting with Andy Felice to talk. He's the one currently that's getting the $50 a month to do, come in and change the light bulb, you know, why doesn't that window shut kind of thing. And we've had, you know, issues, ongoing issues with more involved maintenance, like, um, Maintaining the water filter here, um, fire extinguisher checking, shoving, doing some just some various different mm -hmm. duties that need to happen that really aren't happening right now. Yes. And Cliff and I are going to meet with Andy on Friday to kind of go over this list that I found from two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, see, you know, he's interested and. When the town hall gets renovated, the list will get bigger because we're going to need somebody to do that too. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll see what he comes up with. See what monetary compensation he might be in need of. Um, right now, fifty bucks a month is pretty darn cheap. So 
That's Friday. So does he work or is he? He a has a. So doesn't Andy he's a, have a he's construction? A, he's a he's a custom builder. Um, custom like house builder or cabinets or? He does additions, renovations, hmm. everything. Okay. He can build post and beam. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, and John McCullough is got it on his radar, and this is another whole subject that will get John to come in at some point and to talk to the office staff, but just so it's on your radar. We need to make some changes, configurations inside the building. Cassandra, when she's concentrating on financial stuff, it is so loud in here, and there's people going in and out of the, the vault, and the phone is ringing. She needs at some point or somewhere, when she's concentrating on figures, to not get interrupted, not have it. She can put on these headphones that are coming with the phone system so that she doesn't make errors. So at some point, we're going to need to talk about how we might make some changes inside here. There is some money that we had been putting aside in the town office, town hall reserve fund, which we've split into two, two different funds, town office, town hall. So there is some money if we want to make some changes in the interior. So is it minor changes, like just... I'm not exactly sure. They're talking about maybe taking up these countertops, putting in a space over there for the listers, um, right, putting that. in a putting in a kiosk over there for the public to have access to a computer. There was somebody mentioned, and I can't remember who it was. It was John McCullough taking this mm -hmm. thing down here. So when when this office was originally proposed, people didn't unfortunately think about the long term. They were thinking well, one person because it was Eva. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't think about the long term. Then we ended up. Then we had two people, mm -hmm. and then it morphed into three, and then when Jonathan was here, it was four. So Not to mention listers and right. And uh, the right. other day, the listers were here for our day long meeting with somebody, and they had maps all over the right, place, and they're going in and out of the vault, and it's crazy. But, and this is why I've been beating the drum for two years. Why I think we need a. a Town office over there. I, I don't. You know, I, I still. I, I think. You're gonna have that, to I move think, the vault. Well, no, no. I mean, the clerks here, and I understand there's some. Right. But if people need a quiet place to work, that's the place. And the, if it's work, they can do there. Right. Well, the treasurer can do work there, and if we have everything set up, we have the Wi-Fi, we have the computer, we have the same mm -hmm. access to servers or whatever. You know, I, I just, I really want to underline that at every opportunity because I don't want that to be playland over there and then when the town officials here are feeling cramped or overwhelmed by the noise and activity here, they're feeling guilty because they're displacing, you know, act three of the practice session downstairs. Oh, no, 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 it's very I, I, clear. I want that to be the town office. I really think... I think that's been very clear right, right. along. Well, I, I, I really think it should be the town office, you know, a town office. Yet well, another, I mean, that's what we're planning yeah. on. Well, I th I think it's an it's been seen as being seen as or understood as an overflow, and I, I see it as being the town office. I think it was, space. when we talk with the office like this staff. is like this is the town office space that people will on occasion have meetings that are not town related, right? And and get permission. I think that should be considered as the treasurer needs access to the vault when they're collecting checks. Right. I mean. So, I mean, I think we need to have further yeah. discussion with the yeah. office staff to see what they need. Mm -hmm. Because the vault is important to every position in this yeah. office, including the listers. Right. Um, so if you have it so that the treasurer is working over there part-time and working over here part-time, that might create more inefficiency well, we in could have Well, for instance, we could have duplicates for listers. So we had listers records. Over there. Well, if everything's computerized, you should have access. To or everything. it's all computerized. Right. I, I don't see why the listers necessarily have to be here. They don't need anything associated with the vault. Mm -hmm. I, I understand they do. They. They need to have access to all the lister cards. Right. All well, the I'm land. All the land could, records. If, right. Well, then they can walk across. So the lister card. A lot of times, the lister cards are not in the vault. Well, and here's the other piece to this: is Judy's asking for money in the budget to put everything on cots, so that everything can be done via computer. It's right. a big expense initially, right. but it would get to the point that you're making that people could be stationed over there. So either right. way, there's an expense. Right. I just would hate to see this thing all torn up <coughs> for this 
six month triage and then once you get that space everyone's like wow oh, I, I can see all these opportunities because once right. it's done people are going to walk right. in there us mm -hmm. we're going to walk in there and say wow there's a lot of right. unutilized know. space here remember years ago right. donna was talking about putting file cabinets over there right um so i i, I just think we keep forgetting about that in, in, a, in, a, so. in, a, in, a, in an official way. Well, I think the fact that we're talking about doing a renovation on this while we're renovating over there, I think we, I, I think, think that should be a last resort. Well, I think that the time, there's no timeline. I'm just bringing these issues up to you guys ahead of time mm -hmm. yeah. so you know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that we address the staff right. and say, look, you know, it's not in the budget right this minute or right. something. I just, right. I think it's just, I don't want to push things under the rug. <laughs> Um, I agree that I think that that is what we said, that that was going to be overflow office space or additional office space, so we have to keep that in mind. But there are certain things you just can't do from yeah. over there. Right, right. And, but if we digitize right. all the land records, that would solve a huge problem. You could do stuff from home, you know, right. instead of even coming to the office, according to Judy, because you can get onto cots. And you probably know that answer, whether you can... Can you, as an attorney, get into COTS and review land records if you're doing title searches and things like that? I don't think so. Okay. Well, there, are, you, there are electronic systems that some towns have, have uploaded to and not come. Montpelier is using it, for example, is the one I've used that can you can access. Can COTS document? That you can access remotely. Right. I know COTS, but I've, only, I've used COTS when I'm in the office. And well, it's, it's a different thing to to be able to access um, an electronic system remotely. What does COTS stand for? I don't, I don't remember. Something, I don't know. But there's a document. Judy got an estimate, and she's put it a request in the budget for this. So we'll have to review this further and have further discussion. Hmm. But, um, yeah, it's like... 21 pages. I got I asked you to and just get to the print it off. Uh, uh, online page. index books. That's what this called. Online index books. Cut systems, I see. Yeah. And I haven't had a chance to look at it because she just barely sent so it. So is that what this is? Digitization yes. of yep. index cards? Yep. Yep. So that's it. 21,500. Yep. yep. And is it in here where her proposal is for how far yep. back she's going to go? Well, this would be to do everything. Mm -hmm. And it also helps if there's a fire, everything's digitized, yeah. but you also, because it's all digitized, doesn't mean it's something can't happen to it, so you would still keep the hard copies. Mm -hmm. But this would mean that somebody could work over there. Right. So that sounds like a lot of money for a service, but what does that service get you? And this is like the, for instance, would it cost 20000 <laughs> 20, to renovate this mm -hmm. in a makeshift way? And then we still have the limitations of the small office. We have that big space over mm -hmm. there. So we should look at when we spend on these kinds of things, will, will, it, will it free up, you know, will it save us money in the, in the greater scheme of things? My question is, would, if we had this, would the listers be able to work over there? Or would they still need to have access to the vault? Because that the listers, because there's three of them, mm -hmm. and they're doing this and they're doing that, mm -hmm. There's a lot of talking that they have to do, which is yeah. really noisy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, so my question, I guess, I wonder if if this would negate the need for the listers to have to be here. Yeah. There's a lot of towns using cots, um, and if our listers aren't familiar with it, they wouldn't have to go far to just to learn. Just just lay eyes on what it does. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if East Montpelier has it or not. No. But so I guess I'm, I'm going to read this and see. And so it's that lump sum plus $150 a month. Yep. Right. And the lump sum is a one-time... Right, digitization. Mm -hmm. I, I guess in sum, I, I just would hate to have this build, this room, this space all torn apart. And, you know, it seems like there's, there's been a lot of shifting thought over the last three years. First we heard there's not enough space here. Then we heard we don't need that space over here. Everything's fine and everyone in the room, all 50 people that worked in this office at that time, were quiet and no one 
challenge that. Um, and then a few months later, there's not enough space. I know, we've been through and that. And then a few months later, up to now, we need to renovate this to make take fullest advantage of the space with and minimize the disturbance, which was the original thing concern raised three years ago when I was told, as a select board member, by an official, there's not enough space and it's too noisy. It went from too noisy to not noisy at all. I don't know what you're talking about. So I really I think if we can get along until July and we get a and get a sense of what's over there, basically if we can do something like COTS, which seems like we'd, we'd want to do that anyway. If we can avoid spending good money after bad, spending 20 grand and ripping this thing to pieces, only to have I it. I think that at some point, though, you know. we have to think about a way, and I don't know, maybe the headphones will help for Sandra. It's really important that she has some quiet space to concentrate. Yeah. yeah. Well, can't we, I mean, can we in any way limit the days of the week? that the listers are here, like they're only here like Mondays and Tuesdays to, to 1 o'clock and then they're gone. Well, except you know. if they're meeting with somebody like they did the other day that they had to schedule, that person's not going to want to come back and forth. No, so, yeah. but, so, but, you know, that that's on a, a challenge of an appraisal or a question. I mean, to me, if there, was, there were duplicate records, the master records are here, the originals, and then we had duplicate lister files over there, for instance, then they could have their meetings over there. And if they need to go into the deeds in, in that 10% you know, chance. Does COTS do deeds? Yes. Well, yeah, well that, I'm sure that's right? going to be really expensive. Mm -hmm. No, it's everything. That's that would be the whole point. Oh, that's the whole thing for 20000 That would be the whole point, is to right. be able to do oh, any, kind that's of, a deal. any kind of search of all the land records by just, you know, you, you, mm -hmm. put, in, you put in a name. Mm -hmm. It gives you a list of all the transactions around that name, grantor, grantee, um, a right. delinquent tax issue, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it, wow. it's limited by what you put in it. And then you can yeah, like, pop it up, read it. Yep, I need to print it. It's, uh, I just went in, City Mutt Player yeah, has. It only it, goes back to 1980, though. Well, sh we could oh. go back further. That would be, uh, that's But that's a 20 grand us. deal, back to 80. Um, mm -hmm. And so if we're only going to well, for, so for a few years, people would still need the vaults because mm -hmm. we're not, that's not 40 years back. Um, but there's a, probably like an even more expensive option called COTS hosting, which is what Montpelier has and a few other towns, and that people can access remotely. Right. I thought that was what this was going to do. Well, they do talk about it at the beginning here, mm -hmm. just that. But there is a, another layer called the, uh, the cloud access. Oh. Well, anyways, I think we need to invite this Judy in to talk about this. Yeah. So and we can integrate it with, you know, we know we, we understand you need more space or a quiet space. And, you know, maybe you can just put up a petition. Well, just... John, so you're aware of some of the conversations this may address some of your concerns. Um, what we said is, you know, tell us what you think you need. John, tell us if this is doable with what we have. Mm -hmm. Realize none of this happens overnight, and mm -hmm. at the very minimum, if we were going to do any of it, it would have to happen in phases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you because know, I've heard conversations of doing extensions onto the back right. of this building. Right, brought up too. You know, too. and there's been considerations of well, if we have to go to a professional to act as our lister uh, assessor, right. assessor, they Which would have to have most back. likely their own workspace. That's what they're looking at is their own offices and stuff. So there's all of these larger considerations. Um, at another level, Sandra's going to be formally working 40 hours a week. The office is closed on Fridays. Mm -hmm. There's time you can set well, aside. Maybe. No, but she's been well, working she 40 hours a week. Well, maybe. She's been coming in on Fridays anyway. Right, and maybe that's what she could do, though, is if it's a formalized Same. arrangement, right. she can set up a schedule that gives her 
Time to work when the office yeah, is closed, closed right. Right. right? And she can partition out her work. Yep. I don't know, you know, because I don't know what how her workflow is. Right. But and these are the conversations we need to have, and that's why it's like I want to make sure that we bring these things up now so that it isn't like this shock right. when you hear it otherwise. So I don't want anybody to get all worked up about it because I'm just trying to make sure that the, that it's on the radar, that you don't hear about it from someplace else, right. and how come you didn't tell us? And mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's part of what my job is now, is to kind of gather all this information and bring it back to the full board so that you know what's going on. It's not so a surprise. So when you're down at the Whammy Bar and you hear that John McCullough's redesigning the whole... <laughs> he doesn't want to call it You're not calling it Denise. What the hell's going on over there? I, right. do, I, do, <laughs> I do agree with what John was saying, that it's a little, it's a little hard to, and, and probably a mistake, to think too far ahead. Mm -hmm when we haven't finished the renovation and people can't fully appreciate what's the potential right. there. Right. No, I don't disagree with that, but I'm just saying yeah. that we hear about right. it weekly. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they're really, really feeling it. They're really mm -hmm. feeling the pinch mm -hmm. of, I mean, imagine three people in there, everybody's on the phone. Mm -hmm. You got somebody, a couple people standing at the window, the listers are over there in that corner working. Yeah. People are coming in and out. You got real estate agents in right. the vault. I mean, we're here. I'm here enough now yeah. to see it and to experience it right. instead of just hear and, it from somebody. And not to minimize, please. And I understand the problems with state cubicles. I agree that they don't work well, they, very well. They're horrible. But state government, you have, you five have four desks in that space with a little partition or five desks in that space. Right. And, and the work's getting done. Well or not, I'm just saying, that's right. That's the norm today, and and you go to. I was in the Green Mountain Power Office last year. Oh, those are awful. And uh, they're like that too, and they're running a big corporation. So there's aisles of rows and rows of. And they're sta they're doing stand up desks a lot of them, mm -hmm. and um, yep. so on, on the on headphones. Yep. So. I mean, this is really nice space. Is it well used? Probably not. Look at over there. Yeah, I think there's wasted space. I agree. So I think it's wasted space that I th I'm hoping with minimal expense we could add. You know, maybe Sandra's desk comes out here. Yeah. And you put up some walls mm -hmm. or you know almost to the ceiling. I mean, I think that we just have to look at what what are I, the options. I just I just feel as I feel like if we can just slow it down a little bit. It's been stressful and a pain in the neck, but they got through a year. And it's only eight months. I'm here in July one. That thing's done. Oh, and you oh. know how that fast the winter goes. Yeah. I'm always sad when the snow comes, and more sad when it goes. So um, well, it'll be July one before right. we know it, That's and we saying. won't believe Nothing's it. happening yeah. tomorrow. I'll say it again. Yeah. If you don't want me to bring these issues up so that you guys know what's going on, tell me, and I won't. No, Denise, yeah. that's not it. Don't get all personal about this. I'm, but I'm just I just saying. don't want this issue has been. Across the gamut, it's been not you. We've been receiving I know that. highly variable input from the same people. I know. And the conditions have been more or less the two same those, two those over two and a half, three years. And and it, it's and I and I actually brought up I, when I was arguing <coughs> that that needed to be town office, and I got huge pushback here, not from this board, not from, but the, board. Not from the board. I said no. I was hearing that this place was noisy and cramped and people can get their work done and then I hear from one individual no that's not true and 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 everyone else was silent everyone else was silent and so how can we operate effectively if we're not getting all the facts okay. so now personalities have left and changed and and now all of a sudden there's this frenzy and it's more or less except for Barbara the same no it's the same amount of people okay. except so so I, I, I just, okay, I'm I, just not I, buying I, into the frenzy right okay. now. Okay. I, I, I hear you, John. I am bringing these issues up so you know what's going on. I didn't expect I know that. that we were going to get into a 20-minute debate about what, what it was Well, it's come up. Not. Well, Denise, okay, Denise. So, but you know what, Denise? This has been brought up like three times, and I keep I hearing keep about s renovation, okay. and now I'm hearing about it's budget and whether we can do it in our budget. So we're, I'm so saying it's thank that... You, thank you for bringing it up. I know. You're getting all sensitive about no, it. I'll get sensitive. John, I'm not getting sensitive Denise. about it. It's after nine o'clock, and it's time to. I think it's time to end this part of this discussion. Okay. We yeah, we just need to talk about it when we're fresh. Right. It's 
it's good. We, it's good to know you. We you're hear here about it every single Wednesday. You guys have to listen to it all the time. Right. I so we all, just but letting we all, you know. But we all agree we're going to take a deep breath and and I'm not taking yeah. it personally. I'm just yeah. bringing it. No, I just mean take a deep breath and wait until that's done. And, and that's then we'll, and then we'll have the, the whole slate will be in front of us. Right. right. And, the, exactly. and the people and the whole issue when it came up before there was a whole different set of personalities, dynamics that we can't and should not get into. Right. So. Well, yes. I'm just telling you that that information and is what we relied on. Stop, and, stop talking yeah. about that. Yeah, I think okay. we need to. So okay. I'm wondering if the board can we just like down kind of, just set them in the middle of the table, please. Mm -hmm. So Sandra can pick them up tomorrow. Um, Minutes from, um, I think, two meetings, right? Three, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Right. Do you want to see them? Yeah, you just want to bring them up, please? There's the 15th. I don't think those were. Yeah, add treasurer after. Mm -hmm. Since we added everybody else's title. And I don't know if I had anything else on those minutes or not. You don't have Alfred's title. Is I thought it's a road commission. No. I have it at the top. Yeah, you put it at the top. Oh, he's not even on the top. He's right here, but it's... Oh, it doesn't say road commission. You're right. Should I always ask him for um, office staff to town me, please? I guess. I think, yeah. We might as well get in the habit of doing that. That way, if anybody looks back, they don't have to look back through mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. Is it okay if I'm not adding them in the Yeah, side? yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, then here this we one. Add. I don't think the operations manager was in attendance at this meeting, was he? He did come once recently. Mm -hmm. That was last time. Yeah, that, that was, was last time. And he's not on the list of those the attendees up here. Mm -hmm. Yep, I didn't think to add on. Yeah, okay. I mean, you usually put a standard sentence in there, operations manager wasn't in attendance or something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything else. I think that was it on this one. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on those? That was on that meeting. Yeah. Okay. Now it's from that part from the next one. All right. Do we want to make a motion on this one? Um, sure. I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes with the uh, okay. changes as noted, edits as noted. Okay. Anybody want to second that? Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Is anybody abstaining? I'm abstaining. Okay. Okay. Twenty second. I can't remember what I looked at those. Did you look at these, Sharon? Or I did. So oh, some formatting changes. Yes, I did look at these, I think. Because that was the ones where we did green line. And we clarified about the money or something, right? Yeah, it was illegal. illegal um, Legal fees, legal services are quarterly advance payment. Right. And we got a refund for hours, not even so we can Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can look at these. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know if we. Sometimes those comments, they're not, they don't line up with where you. Mm -hmm. if, if people make too many com comments, they get really long. So I don't remember now if we put, we might want to put in the minutes if there was a budget. Oh, do we have a section budget town report items? Yeah, because remember we clarified that the road operations manager's salary is included mm -hmm. in the highway Our budget, budget. wages. And we, right, and we didn't, we, we didn't know that, and I think that's important information to I remember. I think that was in last week's minutes. It was in last week's minutes, but I, do you want me to write something in the... If it's, if it's in last week's minutes, we don't need to. Okay. I just want to make sure, because otherwise I was never sure where it was supposed to show up. 
So now we have to remember or remember where it is in the minutes. Well, <laughs> either that. I, I think there's challenge. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for that one, right? Further down. It's, um, yeah, and which need to change lawsuit on the Act 46 stuff. They're calling it an appeal, not a lawsuit. It's um, an appeal of the decision of the board of, of Vermont Board of Education. So we always call it an appeal, right? Right. I don't know why that sentence is there. The chair come under the chair and invited all the council members. Yeah, you've asked me to remove that one. Okay. I've, I've left it up so other people could see Did you guys yours see? in case someone prints it. Or is that right? right? Or do you yeah, no, no, no. I mean, unless people think it really needs to be in there. I did invite everybody, and the only people that showed up were Scott, Rick, and Dot. I mean, it doesn't mean anything to, to leave it in or not. Um, because it doesn't really say, but only three members showed up or something like that, so I don't really care if it's in there or not. Um, anything else? Did you look at these rows? I don't remember if I did, but I think they look fine. Okay. Yeah. So do you I want... I think I might have looked at them before. You want to... Does anyone want to make a motion to approve these with edits? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next one. All right. This is a special. Um, this is, this is the right version. Go back a minute. And this is the one that edit. Here we go. That's where I get confused on which one, which version to use. Was it, or what are you, why is that highlighted, Sharon? Was it, no, I, whenever you put in a comment, it chooses something to highlight. I just made a note. Uh, oh, we talked about one time, I would just make a note if I could look at another. Okay. And she wanted it added to the minutes that she reviewed. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, and, and honestly, it's half for me, so that if we don't approve them for three more weeks, I can go in and see my own. Right, right. Okay, I already read these. I don't have to spend time on it. Okay. I didn't make any changes for what that was. Yeah, I don't know that I even need to. All right, anything? Did you have anything else on these? Did you I didn't make any changes on them. I went okay. really quickly. And Rose? I didn't read them. Do you want to postpone yeah, these, or do you want to go ahead? Yeah, All right, uh, anybody want to make a motion? No, I do have something. It's minor. Um, should be Toby Tell, that the parentheses operations, operations manager. Okay. Just, just for all of them. Okay. Just for consistency. Um, so I'll go yep. back into all three of these at the top and add everyone's. Right. Yeah, yep. perfect. Because you got the same thing with Cook. Alfred. C O O K. Cook. Oh, okay. All right, I'll make a motion to approve these minutes with changes. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Phew! All right, now the question is, does the board want to go into executive session to further discuss personnel matters? Do we? I think maybe for a few minutes we should. Okay. Well, it's clear, fresh in everybody's brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would make a motion to um, go into executive session to discuss personnel matters per 1 DSA section 313A3. At 9.15. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. 